Can you guys say thank you to our worship team today one more time? I'm so proud of these guys. This is just fun to watch anytime they're able to come and visit. And uh, by the way, if you are somebody that's visiting with us today, we are so thankful and glad that you are here. Today is going to look and feel a little bit different. Uh, possibly the normal, but here's what's really cool about that is you get an opportunity to kind of peek behind the curtain a little bit and see real people having real conversation. And hopefully there's going to be a lot of just fun stuff that we get to talk about. But, uh, you know, we've been in a series over the last, seems like, year, just kidding, uh, called Experiencing God. It's actually been a, a really, really great series. It's a series that, uh, when I was in high school, changed uh, my life. I, I mean, I understood God in a, a new and fresh way, and, and, I'm, and I mentioned this last week, we, we've tried to share these kinds of things with you, but the idea behind experiencing God is that, uh, or some of the ideas are, are that God is always working, right? God is always moving. He is always working, and sometimes that's really hard for us to recognize, believe, maybe, or even see, right? Because maybe things aren't working out in our life or in our minds or in our hearts the way that we would imagine them to, Maybe right now you're watching us online, you're like, hey man, I don't always experience God or see God continuing to move, but it doesn't negate the fact that God is continually moving and he's working in his ways that are so much uh, higher than our ways. But another idea of this is that God is saying, look, not only am I continuing to move and I'm continuing to work and strategize and, and work my will, I'm inviting you to join me in this. And that's either really exciting or incredibly scary. How many of you have kind of thought that when, when you knew God was calling you to something and you were just like, "Woo, no one? Awesome. There we go. Come on. We can be honest. We're a family in here, okay? If you don't know anybody, you're still part of this family, like it or not, all right, for the next few minutes. But anyway, uh, the idea, though, is that God is working and he says, hey, look, I'm inviting you to join me in changing the world. I'm inviting you to join me in impacting people's lives uh, around me. But one of the things that also happens a lot of times as we're experiencing God, as we're walking with God, as we're diving deeper into his word, is that God is going to drive us to a point where we have to ask, or not ask a question, but we have to make a decision. Are we going to go left or are we going to go right? Like, are we taking the red pill or are we taking the blue pill for any Matrix fans, right? I mean, that's kind of how it goes with far bigger consequences. But the point is this, uh, that God brings us to this crisis of belief. Are we going to trust God or are we going to go by our own way and our own direction. Well, Jesus says in Luke, he says, look, if anyone wants to be my disciple, what does he must do? He must pick up his cross daily, deny himself, and follow me. Thanks for that, right? I mean, that's not an easy, that's not an easy thing. That's, that's daily picking up our cross. That's not like three big markers in our lives. We're like, oh God, I'm going to go ahead and choose to follow you again. No, God is inviting us to join him, to walk with him through the good, the bad, the ugly, through chaos, through peace, on top of mountains, in the middle of a valley. God is like, look, I'm working, I'm inviting you to follow me and join me in my work, and even when things get hard, I'm trying to tell you, trust me, follow me, pick up your cross, deny yourself, and let's roll. That's not an easy thing to really talk about, or experience even. And one thing that I've found over the last couple years, just in my own life and in my own faith, and as I've talked to hundreds of people and other pastors as well and, and parents and, and family, et cetera, man, it's been a weird season for a lot of reasons. We've, we've kind of touched on this at times. Sometimes we've had very open, honest conversations about that with people that we know and love. But I don't know if we've all been like really honest about the, the toll that the last 18 months to two years has taken on most of us. And it seems to affect everything. And one of the things that can often prevent us from walking with God faithfully, denying ourselves, taking up our cross daily, and saying yes to whatever it is that God is inviting us to join him in, is sometimes we are so beat down, or sometimes we are so frustrated, or sometimes we are so blind that we just can't see that being a plausible option or a desirable option. And when I read the word of God, I, I, I read over and over again this reality. God is always saying, be thankful. And one of the ways that we kind of get into the right mindset, one of the ways that we get in the, into the right perspective about God, about our lives, about who we are in Christ, is remembering all that Jesus is and what he's done. 
in this idea of being thankful because we can choose to be miserable by the thoughts that just keep zooming in our minds or we can hit pause and we can be like, you know what, God, I have a whole lot that I can be thankful for. There's somebody even in our Takatnu family that has no idea the impact of these words, but several weeks ago just said, you know, it's been really hard, but for days I just keep this running journal of all the things that I'm thankful for. And it has just lifted this person's spirits. But little do they know that it also lifted mine. Even uh, this past Tuesday for our staff devotion, we have a 30-minute segment of time where we get together as a staff. And I'm going to be honest, I needed Tuesday to happen. But basically, one by one, people are talking about various scriptures, about thankfulness. And it's all over uh, the Bible. It wasn't like 10 people stole the same verse, right? It was a, a couple people did that. But anyway, the point is, like, everybody is using the word of God and sharing stories. And I remember at the end of that 45 minutes, it was supposed to be 30. I just remember being blown away and just full because we were celebrating all that God has done. And church family, while these last couple years have been brutal, on so many levels. I'm not trying to be dramatic. That's just the best word I've got for it on a lot of levels. There's a lot that we can celebrate. And so a couple months ago, we asked our church family here at Takanu to, to join us in this 40 days of fasting and prayer, where we could just ask God for a new, fresh move of himself in our lives individually, but also us as a church family. And so what I want to invite us to do for the next few minutes is I want to hear what you're thankful for. I want, to, I, want to hear, I, want to, I want us to just be honest, be willing to introduce ourselves, say our first names. You don't have to give us your social security number or anything crazy. Just say who, say who you are. And the idea here is that you just say, this is what God has done in my life over the past 10 days, 40 days, three years. Okay? What is God doing? What does God have as finger on. We're going we're gonna to spend the first part of today celebrating what God is doing. And I'm going to invite some, I need some teammates for this, so I'm going to invite Chelsea Fullman. Please get up. Standing ovation for Chelsea Fullman, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she is our awesome family ministries director. She hangs out with a lot of your kids. Thank you for all that you do, seriously. Um, I really can't thank you enough for all that you do. Uh, Tim Fullman, he's one of our elders. This is also Chelsea's husband. If you don't know Tim, this is, this is Tim. Like I said, he's one of our elders. And I'm going to invite Eric Knight to come up here as well. He's also one of our Change Point elders. And pro tip, he runs campus ministry. So he is my boss, but he's also a really good friend as well. So I'm going to jump down. Hopefully this is going to be really loud and awkward. Family meeting. A little better? All right. I know this is going to seem a little weird right now. Okay, we're on the floor now. So now the, the, the team is moving toward you, all right? But we've got a couple microphones. And uh, ultimately this, we, we just, what is God doing? We just want to hear fresh stories of, of, hey, this is how God answered a prayer. This is how God fill in the blank. This is how God, you get the idea. Then after that, we're going to kind of give uh, a financial update as we finish the last fiscal year. Kind of what are we looking at moving forward? And then at the end, probably have a little bit of brainstorming if we've got time. So let me kick us off with something I'm really thankful for, especially during this last 40 days. Uh, I have, for me, I, I just, at the beginning of this, full, dis, uh, full transparency, kind of had a stone cold heart with some things. Just kind of numb. Like anybody else been there recently? <laughs> just numb. There's just so much noise, right? My ball team didn't win. Anytime you turn on the news, it's crazy town, right? I mean, there's just all these things that can easily make us numb. Also, I am a parent of an almost four-year-old and an almost two-year-old. That'll just make you numb at times, all right? I have amazing boys, but you get, it's real life. But about two weeks ago, I just watched God bring a softening and a tenderness that I've desperately needed in my life. So I'm thankful that that's something that God did in my life and in my heart over the last couple of weeks as just diligently seeking the Lord in prayer and even had the opportunity be, to be praying for others. And if one of the things I really liked about this 40-day thing was being able to specifically pray for specific things throughout the course of these 40 days. So I'm going to stop talking. I want to hear from you. And uh, so here we go. Who wants, to, who wants to go next? What are we celebrating? Oh, and by the way, just time out real quick. If you are joining us online, Chelsea is hanging out on Facebook with us. 
We'll have technology. And so if you have something you want to celebrate, we'll make sure that we read it. And then later, if you have a question of some kind that you would like an answer for, we'd love to, uh, to engage in that capacity as well. We know not everybody could be here today. So who's next? Who's, okay, what's God doing? Like, this is good stuff. Like, this helps us get back into that, man, God, you're amazing. Life is not completely falling apart. This is really cool. So who's next? And please say your name for everyone. All right. I don't know that I really need this, but um, <laughs> I'm Darissa Martin, and um, my husband and I have been coming here to Change Point to Cottonou almost two years now. We started right before the pandemic. But um, something, a, a big testimony that I want to share, and I, I'm sorry, you'll still love me when I'm done. It's true. You just said that in front of everyone. I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> When, about a year and a half ago, um, I was experiencing a lot of physical pain, and at the same time, we were having some strife in our home. I was raising um, a 15 and a half, 16 year old daughter, and um, we were struggling. And um, we stood back here, and Eric and several others laid hands on me, and we prayed. And um, Pain is moving away, and it's a chronic condition, but I've had like seven, eight months of really good physical um, relief. But the biggest thing is my baby girl stood up on that stage today, and she praised her Jesus. Aha. That's amazing. And um, she doesn't go to church here. She goes to Raspberry, but I have watched a little over a year and a half ago. She wasn't involved in church, and she's – a leader over at Raspberry, and she's helping lead the middle school group, and she has gotten involved with a great, fantastic youth, and some of this started with their ministry and their trip to Texas last year, and some of you may notice that our youth, they're getting ready to go on a Tex-Mex trip in March, and so I just want to put out, if you think God can't move and he can't do things in your children's lives and in your family's lives, just ask him, because I'm sitting there watching my girl praise Jesus and come home saying, I'm a Jesus freak, and I'm proud of that, and she's proud of that, and it's just an amazing thing to watch what he can do. Praise God for that. Thank you, Darissa. called out by mom. <laughs> Sorry about that, but that's pretty cool. All right, who's somebody else? That's a, that's amazing. Like that is no small thing. Everything that you just said between physical pain, but people caring for you well and know that that's going to continue, but also just seeing watching God just erupt in the in the life of a young person. Adults, don't ever underestimate how God uses young people. Every revival that's happened throughout human history has started with a group of young people. So there's that, all right? Anyway, who's next? What else? What else are we celebrating? What's God doing? There it is. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I just don't like awkward silence for leaders. And I know what that feels like, so I'm just going to start talking. Um, so my name is Karen McDevitt, and that's not even a joke. It really is Karen. Um, uh, nice. I'm excited because we have moved back up here to Alaska. So we lived up here a few years ago, and then God moved us back to Colorado. And it was right before the Zakat New Campus started, and we were so excited about ChangePoint expanding into different areas. And then we were told to leave, and we couldn't be a part of it at the beginning. And we're like, oh, that's weird. But, um, but God is good, and he's faithful, and he had a, a season for us in Colorado. And then we came up this summer, and we got to hang out with some dear friends, the Fullmans and the Knights and the Homer Deans. And Bethany, you're becoming a dear friend. Um, Justin, and we just had so much too. fun. Oh, Justin. Just throwing that out there. It's cool. Bethany's Justin's better. all right. Justin's yeah. all right. Um, and so we just um, had a really good time, and we just started praying, like, Lord, if you want us back up here, would you – just, you know, move some mountains. And he did. And so, oh, I don't want to cry. But yeah, so we're back, and we're so excited. And we're excited to be part of the Takatnu family. And we just felt like God was leading us here. And independently, it was like the weirdest thing. And um, Nick asked us, he's like, would you pray about coming to Takatnu? And we're like, 
Yeah, we kind of already did. We didn't even know it. So, um, yeah, we're just excited to be here and excited to see what um, God is going to do and, you know, just the plans that he has. He just is full of surprises. So, Yes. Thank you, Karen. We are glad the McDevitts are here. That's very cool. Chelsea, you up for telling us some of the things that you're celebrating in family ministries? This is Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name is Chelsea Fullman, and I am the family ministry director here at <laughs> Tukotnu. Um, we have our kiddo, our elementary kiddos in the back. Everybody wave. Hi. Um, so the uh, the last eight weeks, actually, we have been doing a discipleship course with our elementary kids because um, I I was kind of thinking and praying over what to do uh, this fall and realized that a number of our kids have given their lives to Christ in the last year and a year and a half, and um, but they still had a lot of questions, and this is one of the benefits of having a smaller group is we were able to just basically take them through a small group kind of thing where they learned about what it means to be a follower of Jesus, what it means to be a part of a church, what it means to get baptized and uh, tithing and uh, communion and all that. So there are a number of uh, people who also taught them those different things and it it's been a blessing to me to watch them can kind of make connections and connecting dots and also just asking some really really good questions about what is the holy spirit like what is what is all of this and um uh, i think one of the best parts was i was doing a a poster about what is church with lily and lena and evie and just the things that they were telling me, it was all the things that we've been doing here at Takatnu for three and a half years, every day. And it's not even that we tell them like, oh, this is what it means to be a part of a church. We go to small group and we serve each other. We love each other. But they just, they, they put that out there. They were like, we love each other. We serve each other. We push carts. We <laughs> clean up. We, um, we go to small group. We pray together. We sing together. And that's just because all of us here have been doing that day in and day out. And they see that and they, they're they acknowledging that even if like they don't have words to it. I think the last eight weeks have just put words to what they've been seeing for three and a half years here. Um, so this is just a really special and f uh, it is a special place and a special group of people and um Things are happening in the lives of our kids. They do see it, um, and even the even the littles, uh, the the preschoolers, they see it too. And just that this is a safe and fun place for them to come is really cool. Um, yeah, it's been a really big blessing to have Adventureland open for the last uh, yeah a little bit over a year. Because especially last fall when we were open, like this was kind of the only normal thing that they had um because they weren't in school they were doing it all online and all that but it's been a really big blessing for to me to be with the kids and especially over the last eight weeks seeing them kind of making connections and all that kind of stuff thank you that is really cool What else? What, what are some things that God has been doing in your life? Can I just call out the Slamas right now? We're going to celebrate the heck out of your precious new baby and welcome. Sorry about that. I'm not sorry. That's awesome. All right. It's like, yeah. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Yes. Sorry, that just pumps me. There's a lot of kids being born at Takatanu this year and coming next spring. But anyway, so we're, oh, Max is going to bring it. All right, here sure. we go. All right. <laughs> I'll talk. It's okay. Um, I'm Max Slama, wife Randy, little Leo over there. He's really good at sleeping <laughs> it's a for now. Um, Celebrate that. Yeah, yeah, he's getting better. Um, yeah, we just had our first kid, and it's crazy. It's awesome. Um, and just to be brief, we just have a lot of great friends. Um, a bunch are here who have brought us food. It's awesome food. 
Um, <laughs> like really good food, not just saying like, oh, they not brought Taco us food Bell. and we just kind of put it aside. It was like legit good. Um, and yeah, they've just been there for us like they have been for years in this community here and in some of the community groups at Change Point. So yeah, we feel great and uh, really supported because I didn't realize how tough it was raising a little kid. So it's been very helpful. So we're we're grateful for a lot of things for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks. We're grateful for you guys, man, in this new season of life. Anybody else? And if you are visiting today, don't be scared. Oh, Daniel Chronic. All right, give it up for Daniel. He's been running tech for us for like 18 months. All right. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm Daniel. I've been working audio and helping with setup uh, for the last y two years, I think, now. About somewhere in there, two and a half. Um, but... As of this last fall, I've been, God's been putting on my heart to help work with our online digital ministry. Um, we've got, I've had just some cool thoughts and plans, and there's a great team over there at Raspberry that's trying to put together a more digital-focused worship service that is for people who you know, can't really show up in person or um, aren't in a place right now where they really would like to show up in person, and we want to be able to minister to those people as well, and we have some cool ideas and thoughts on how to be able to make that happen, and it's a place that really speaks to me and a community of people that I kind of identify with somewhat. Um, I can know, having gone through 2020 and having been inside for a long time, it's like, man, I know what it feels like to want to sit in front of a computer for <laughs> all day rather than interacting with other people. And uh, that's uh, like being able to try and minister to those people and help get them involved and in participating is something that's really near and dear to my heart. And so uh, starting in January, I'm going to be transitioning over to that team. Um, so if there are any of you who are like, hey, you know, audio is kind of interesting. I wonder what it would be like to sit and push faders. Do come talk to me. I would love to help train you, because right now we just have uh, Keaton and, uh, and uh, he's, who is learning, and I appreciate him to be able to pick it up and, and learn from me. But, you know, we really need a team back here to make the church function, you know? We can't put it all on Keaton, um, but... Uh, so if you know people, you have a nephew, you have a, 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 you know, an aunt and uncle, somebody that you know who's like really into this kind of stuff, do see if you can convince them to come uh, help out because we can always use more help back here. So, but yeah, that's what's been going on in my life. That's cool, man. Hey, we do want to celebrate just you being here week in and week out, helping with plugging in all the things that I would destroy in two seconds. So thank you for your faithfulness, man. Yep. Sometimes I don't think we realize all the stuff that happens behind the scenes. And just remember to make a Sunday happen when we just get to walk in and, and worship and hear uh, the word. Like there's a lot of other groundwork that has been laid. And so again, Daniel, and we're, there he is. Uh, thank you again, man, for being so faithful. What, a, what an example you have been and a blessing you've been to this family. So thank you, man. All right. Any other celebrations? Yeah, there we go. Uh, good morning. My name is Cherie. Um, I I was um, introduced to Change Point by my best friend Dana. Uh, she lives in Kodiak now, and uh, I'm so glad I started coming. Um, but I have kind of a complicated life. <laughs> well, we'll just um, I have three adult children with autism. My youngest is 18. And just told me a couple years ago they're transgender. So that's a whole, I mean, that's weird. It's a hard concept. Um, I'm currently staying with my oldest daughter. And we live in a trailer off Bonface. And it's got some issues. Um, but, I mean, we, we did get heat in September. 
we I had to replace the furnace and there's other things wrong but that's something else but in all the struggles that I've been through the last several years um, I have learned that um, I have far greater blessings and more good things in my life than adversity I have so much to be grateful for to God giving me the breath of life every day and um, a long, long time ago, I read this these little books, um, God's Little Book of Instruction. They're short, big words, easy to read, with a Bible verse underneath. And one of them that I hold dear to my heart is, give your problems to God. He's going to be up all night anyway. So <laughs> um, I, I tend to use humor a lot. Because a lot of times, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. And, but I have learned to let go, let God. It's, I'm learning to let go, let God. Trust is a real hard thing. But I have been greatly blessed lately. And I'm thankful for the many blessings that I have. And that's all. Thank you, Sheree. Thank you, Sheree. Thank you. And Sheree, you are such a blessing. Thanks for your encouragement. Thanks for your perspective and your attitude. I'm thrilled that you moved back up here from Kodiak, just selfishly. But uh, thanks also for just being willing to share that in front of all of us. So thank you. Anyone else? I am Jim. This is my wife, Candy. We're from Washington State. I'm just thankful that we got to come up here for the week, spend the week with the Knights. We got to Thanksgiving, of course. We got to go to Grandparents' Day, and then we had a great weekend up at Girdwood. So I'm just thankful for all that. Right on. Well, glad you're up here, man. Anybody else? Mr. Nick Homerding. Yeah, thanks. I, I think Karen's up here, right? All right, awesome. Oh, I'll keep this short, but uh, so yeah, so Karen and I, uh, we've been together for about 17 years, and I'm going to screw yeah. this up. I think we've been married 13. <laughs> yes. Well played. So, uh, so actually, last year, uh, the Lord really uh, brought us into a new season of our marriage. It just absolute just openness, openness and trust that I really didn't think was possible. And we just got to really, I would say, experience God's grace for the first time after being together for 17 years. And there's a lot of details in that, but uh, it's just, just really cool uh, approaching that season of, uh, you know, just realizing that we just don't deserve the things that we have and it's just the things that we have it's it's fully from him right. and, and just to give thanks on that i mean just things to even take for granted i mean our marriage our family and uh and even just i mean this campus and friendships and uh so that was really cool that the lord brought us through that season and then we renewed our vows last year nice. um which was that yeah, was it was a real win so i just i didn't I already thought things were good, and then for God to bring us into a season that I didn't think was possible was just like him. So, yeah, just really thankful for that. He's inviting you yep. to join him. Yeah, it's good stuff right there. <laughs> All right, if there's nobody else, then I'm going to invite us to go down a trip down memory lane. Can we handle a little memory lane for a second? I promise I'll go fast. So three years ago, uh, 2018, our elders uh, – at ChangePoint Global got together and, and just we're asking this question, God, how do we how do we reach Alaska? How do we reach the world beyond? And they spent hours and days begging God for direction, begging God for wisdom, all of those things. You know, our, our vision statement here is life in Christ for every Alaskan and the in the world beyond. Life in Christ for every Alaskan and the world beyond. That's not a small, tiny <laughs> vision, right? That's that's eyes wide open kind of thing. Well, ultimately, God led our elder team to uh, this idea of launching 
other campuses. And that's exactly what we did. So we have a ministry team up in Kotzebue. Obviously, you're here at Takatnu. We, we started in, in 2018. Also, the Matsu campus in the Valley. And we, we didn't really know what we were signing up for. If you were here in the beginning, you're probably like, yeah, we had no idea <laughs> what was going to be coming next. And, uh, but that's what God called us to do. And so there's a couple things that also happened that year. But basically, uh, we, you, you've got to raise capital, correct, to be able to launch uh, alternate sites. And so we, uh, prom the Promised Land Initiative was birthed uh, in 2018. And so we had this huge pledge, uh, this drive where we, we approached our church family and said, hey, here's what we believe God is, is calling us to do and inviting us to do. And so we're just asking you, church family, will you help us make this happen? And so uh, many of our church family jumped in and, and, and has helped, uh, you know, with the Promised Land Initiative. And from that, we were able to actually birth uh, these various campuses. And, and for us, we started meeting at the end of May in this building uh, in 2018. And we, we weren't in this beautiful room at the time. We just got together uh, officially on a Wednesday night and uh, we had a meal together and we started brainstorming and we got to know one another. We got to meet uh, one another. And again, many of you were here three years ago, but I also think about, uh, you know, the vision behind the Takatnu campus, and I also think about the heartbeat behind the Takatnu campus, and we really believe that Northeast Anchorage was a place that, that we needed to launch the Takatnu campus. Why? Because we're right outside J. Bear Military Base, if you don't know that, uh, and we have a heart to reach men and women that are in the military. We also want to see Northeast Anchorage hear about the gospel. There's a lot of families represented here, a lot of nationalities represented here. Do you know that Bartlett High School is, I think, number two or three in the nation as far as the most diverse when it comes to language? Anchorage itself, I think, holds actually the top three. That just blows my mind. I didn't grow up in Alaska, so I didn't know all of these things. But long story short, we have a heart to see life in Christ for every Alaskan and the world beyond. But specifically, we wanted our campus to reach J. Bear and also to reach uh, Northeast Anchorage. And in so many ways that has happened, and, and I, can, I can recall name after name and person after person with our campus. I mean, we, we started with a core of about 80 or 85 people, and we met weekly all through the summer of 2018. We had meals together. We, had, we, we, we did discipleship training together. We cast vision together. We learned how to run all of this stuff together. If any of you remember, anybody remember the trailer day? <laughs> too soon maybe all right anyway but the point is you know I, I remember what that kind of looked like and 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 so it's been amazing to kind of take a look back and just imagine all of the people that have invested their time and their energy and their finances into making the Takatnu campus happen and there's been about 85 people I've actually counted this way too many times but there's been about 85 people that have left Alaska in the last three plus years and we knew, look, we, we understood that, hey, if, if we're going to be posted outside of J. Bear, there's going to be a lot of transition, right? There's a lot of people in the military that they come here for two to four years, and then they, they move on. And so that's been hard, right? That's hard to absorb. These are people that we've gotten to know. These are people that we loved. I mean, you've invested in their children. I mean, there's, there's a lot to that. And then you add this super fun thing called a global pandemic. Awesome. And then we didn't get to meet. For six months, whoo, you talk about brutal. And I remember so many times in that season, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? How are our people doing? And so we try to get creative. We were doing Zoom calls and we were doing drive-by to people's houses. Nothing weird, just saying hi, all right? So that sounded really terrible. Anyway, the point is uh, we, we tried to make it work, but we also began asking questions. God, what are you doing? God, what are you up to? How, how can we care for people well? That has been the heartbeat of our staff team. And Eric can tell you, Chelsea can tell you this. We have spent hours. God, how can we care for people well? And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think we, we hit it out of the park every time. That's real life. I'm not proud of that statement. I'm just being honest with you. But I've also seen over the last three years, life after life after life that has been impacted because of God's presence in this campus and the faithfulness of his people. It's a powerful thing. And do you know that there are people all over the globe that are making much of Jesus and that the Cotton Campus played a massive role in that? So I want to say thank you 
to Cotton Hill campus for that. And if you're new, hopefully you're not freaked out right now. Hopefully you're just like, whoa, this is awesome. But make no mistake, this campus has played a major role in the lives of so many people. My kids have been born since I've been here at this campus. I, I can't thank you guys enough for the investment and for you parents that have also invested in my kids. I can't thank you enough for that. What a blessing. I do think as we move forward, though, there's a lot of questions that we have. God, what are you up to? God, how do we move forward? Because one of the temptations and one of the things that I've learned over the last few months, and this is just the hard way probably in a lot of levels, but also just in having uh, conversations with other pastors across the lower 48 that are dealing with the same things we are. The, the landscape is different. Ministry is different. Yeah, there's our basic human needs are the same, but the way in which we minister is going to look different moving forward. And, and for some of us, we don't like that because we're, we're used to the habits that we had before, the ways we used to do things, but unfortunately, that's no longer real life in many ways. And so one of the temptations is to always look back. Oh, I remember back when, fill in the blank. And I remember this, and I remember that. And those are not bad things. But there comes a point where we have to just see, God, what are you doing? And how can we accomplish this vision of reaching Northeast Anchorage with the gospel of Jesus? And it might mean that we need to tweak a few things. It might mean that things look or feel a little bit differently. And so uh, let me, I want to give you guys a quick update because it's already 1130. We've got a few more minutes, but I'd love to give you guys just a heads up on how we finished the last fiscal year. Our fiscal year runs September 1 to August 31st every year. Uh, we just recently got all of our information. We want to be transparent on all of those, uh, on all of those things, and then also kind of update you guys on, hey, what are we looking at for the next fiscal year? So, uh, Mike, that's right, man. Is, is today your first time going solo on the lyrics? Ah, give it up for Mike. <laughs> You're doing a great job, man. So, let me, I'm going to do my best to explain this very, very quickly. I know for some, we start talking numbers, eyes glaze over, people are taking naps. If you want to do that, go for it. But anyway, so this was our last year, uh, fiscal year 2020. Again, it started September of 2020, finished in August of 2021. But our budget, what we were, what our team came up with and our elders approved it, was for an overall budget of $326,332. And we were hoping, because we, we, we do try to, plan and, and have hope in this as well, but we also were hoping that our expected general giving would equal out at the end of the fiscal year to about $330,000, all right? So that, that's, that was our dreams, hopes, big picture ideas, all right? So here's reality, all right? So our actual giving was about $238,000, which let me just hit pause on that one. Takanu family, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your generosity. I've actually gone back and done a lot of the math as far as, I, I don't know who gives. I, I just want you guys to know that I don't, I don't have a clue who gives and doesn't give, but I, I do know this. We have over half of our church family, it's actually closer to two-thirds, are represented in faithful giving. And so I just want to tell you thank you for that church family. So last year, our Takatani family gave $238,000. Our actual expenses were near 269, all right? Now, if you want to go back up to the top real quick and just look at that, that top number, while our giving was less than hoped for, we were able to shave a ton off of our budget last year to, to make things work. And there's a few factors in that. First of all, we, we literally slashed as much of our budget as we possibly could. We didn't spend money on some things that we actually probably need moving forward uh, down the road, but Point being, we try to get super creative and just shaving our budget as, as much as we could. Also, this is a blessing of God. You talk about God being up to some things. ASD reached out to us and said, hey, we know you still want to meet here. What if we cut your rent in half? Well, that sounds like a terrible idea. No, it sounds great, right? So we absolutely were like, yes, where do we sign up for that, okay? We also went, instead of using three rooms here at Bartlett High School on a Sunday morning, to only two. So there, there were some strategic things that we were able to do. And so long story short... Uh, we had a net loss of last fiscal year of just over $31,000. Here's what's really neat. I just want to share this with you. The Promised Land, uh, the Promised Land Initiative was a three-year 
initiative. Many of you know all this. Uh, many of you have been involved in this. If you're just visiting, sorry, you're learning this for the first time, but not sorry at the same time. Anyway, so it was a three-year commitment, and there was still money left over in the third year of Promised Land to cover our loss. Does that make sense? This is also the case for the Matsu campus and also Kotzebue as well. Yeah, praise God for that, all right? So we're not, like, yeah, I just, I'm thankful. All right, so moving forward into the next fiscal year, we've trimmed our budget <laughs> by a lot, all right? And so this year, our budget moving into this next year is hopefully about $305,000. Now, I will tell you this, this allows us to be fully functional as far as all the kind of ministry ideas that we have, uh, et cetera, and that's what the hope is. To accomplish that, we need just over $25,000 a month given by our Takatnu family to make that happen, all right? And here's what I'll say about that. Um, this, is, this is a thing. This is a real thing, you know? The other part of this is Promised Land, the initiative is, is over in the sense of, you know, we're not still giving to it. There's not that umbrella anymore. So long story short, we this next year need to become uh, self-sustaining financially. All right, that's, this is just part of the next step. And by the way, just so you know, at the beginning of, of, of 2020, we were really close to making that happen. Bam, pandemic, right? And we don't meet for six months. You get the idea. Church family, we're at a fork in the road on some levels. And we've been doing this for a little over three years. And so some of the questions we've been asking as a team Tim is being one of our elders. Eric and I have had this conversation. Our elders at ChangePoint Global, they look at numbers and they look at attendance and those kinds of things. And we've kind of all asked the question, how are your people right now? Where are people at? Are they tired? Are they exhausted? Are they tired of pushing carts? Are they tired of setting up and tearing down? Are they tired of taking signs out when it's minus 11 in the morning <laughs> on a Sunday? You know, that, that's the idea. Again, we've been doing this for a while. Are, are, is your campus fatigued? Are they tired? How are they right now? Another way to maybe say that would be this. Does the Takanu campus still believe in the vision of reaching Northeast Anchorage? And that sounds really, really dramatic, but I'm asking this question to us as practically and as honestly as we can. Because I believe that, that, our, that our church family is the Lord's. It's not mine. It's not Chelsea's. We joke that we work for Chelsea, but it's not hers. It's not Tim's. It's not Eric's. It's not our change point elders. God has called us to be open-handed in the things that he, he gives us, but also the things that he's invited us to shepherd and to lead. And it's tempting to want to hold tight, but the truth is we need to have an open hand. And I believe that God is still working, and I believe that God is still moving. And I just want you to know, church family, I still personally believe in the vision of reaching Northeast Anchorage. I do. I love getting to work with this team and getting to know you and do life with you. But here's what I also know to be true. God did not call me to provide all the answers. How do I know that? Well, because God's very, very clear in his word that he speaks through his people, not just his shepherds, not just his pastors, not just his teachers, but he speaks through his word and he speaks, speaks through his Holy Spirit, who, by the way, if you are a Christ follower, the Holy Spirit lives within you. So what I'm saying to you, church family, is what is God saying to you? How are you right now? Man, I know it's been a rough couple years. And our, and our campus has has shrunk in the last couple years. I mean, if you look back, again, I'm using this only as an example, but if you look back to January, February of 2020, we were averaging, averaging between 110 and 130 people coming week in and week out. Then we don't meet for six months, then we reopen Labor Day weekend last fall, and guess what? Our attendance has been anywhere from 30 people to 70 people. It's closer to the 50 to 60 range on average. Are we gonna hang and just look at the, the old days and the glory days? Or are we going to say, God, this is our new normal. We are now a church of 50 to 70 people. God, what are you doing? And how do we follow you? How do we move forward? So what I want to invite us to do, I know, Tim, you have something I know that you wanted to share about what a healthy church looks like, and I think that's pretty cool. 
And after that, I want to invite us. We've got this really cool table in here. It's pretty nice. You like that? Thank you, Tammy, by the way, for being a rock star. Tammy, is she leads all the technicians here at ASD. Um, we love them. That's another thing to celebrate for. We have a great relationship with ASD and the technicians, and that is a God thing. So I'm grateful for that. Um, Tim's going to share. But I want to invite us just to a few minutes of just brainstorming, right? What are some things? How do we, how do we move forward in this new normal? And also be honest. Hey, I'm tired right now, Justin. I'd like to see this. Justin, don't be, a, don't be afraid to, to be honest. So Tim, I'll get out of the way. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's interesting. We were talking about having this family meeting. You know, there was this question, okay, what do we get into? What do we not? What do you cover? What do you not? And, you know, we really did feel it was important to go through some finances, do things, just like when we have our family meetings. We have to talk about our finances. We have to talk about how are we doing? What's going on? You know, Justin mentioned attendance and where things are at. And yet, we also want to be really clear on our heart for these things. What is most important to us isn't the number of people who are sitting here or the amount of money that comes in. It's seeing life in Christ. It's seeing lives changed. And so I didn't share earlier when we were sharing about things we're excited for, but that's one of the things that has really excited me over the last three years is getting to see lives changed for Jesus as a result of being in community here. And I think the community groups are a huge place where I have been super encouraged to get to see that. In our community group, it has just been amazing over the years, even as people have come and gone, to see what God has been doing in the lives of the people who are there. And even how he's using their time here to prepare them as they go out to other places to be taking life in Christ there. And it was neat hearing, you know, when Max shared, when Nick shared, you know, other people have mentioned how community has been a huge thing. And that just excites me. And I think community, like Justin said, is important for more than just, you know, getting together once a week in a small group. It's important that we are hearing from God together. You know, as we've entered this time of 40 days of prayer and fasting, I struggled at times being like, all right, God, like, what are you saying? I'm not hearing what, you know, I was hoping to hear. And the sense I really got was we need to have this family meeting. And it has actually made me really excited to get to hear from all of you. What do we see moving forward? I mean, I think there are challenges ahead, and yet God is so faithful. He is not surprised by what has happened. And it's going to take some creative things to see what is it going to look like? How are we going to do this? You know, it's interesting being married to someone on staff. I get to see a little bit behind the curtain as to what does it look like when we don't have enough volunteers to open things and how, you know, Chelsea and Justin and Lee and others, they're, you know, putting themselves on the line week after week to fill in those gaps and to do things. And, you know, so there's a part that our whole body gets to step into, but also I think the Lord is going to use our whole body to come up with the creative ideas and solutions and just give us a sense of what he's doing and where he wants to go. So I, for one, am super excited to hear from all of you now about, yeah, how you're doing, are you still bought into reaching Northeast Anchorage and Jay Bear, and how might that happen? What kind of glimpses or visions has God given you for what that could look like as we move forward? And I'll just mention one thing about that, just as an example. You know, God, we, we've kind of had this conversation at times before, but there's times when God has his finger on something in your life. And so I'm going to use this purely as an example. But if there's somebody, one of you, that's like, man, I just can't shake this thought that, I, that we need a women's ministry at Takata. I'm just using this as an example. And so my question would be, okay, then what else is God saying to you about that? Because that doesn't need to be just in starting a women's ministry. That'd be super weird and probably not real good. All right, I'll pr I promise you that. The point that I think Tim is also trying to make is that, look, as God is, is exposing uh, his ideas to you and sharing his ideas with you, what is he calling you to do? And what are some of these things that maybe we're not seeing as a staff that God says, no, this is what I'm going to go do in Northeast Anchorage. And it may look like a new women's ministry. It may look like a fill in the blank. But God may be calling you to actually be the one that, that carries the yoke on, or the, the weight of that, if that makes sense. So let's do this. Let's brainstorm. Let's hear how we're doing. Before we uh, brainstorm, D uh, wrote in on, fa on Facebook. This is D. Like you said, the last 18 months have been hard, and I would say the past several months have added a lot of anxiety to my days for various reasons related to COVID. Through these 40 days of prayer, I felt God saying, you can do hard things with me. I would sum up what he has, what he has, sorry, 
what he has is his finger on in my life is increasing my dependence on him. I am thankful for experiencing his presence more deeply and seeing him grow my trust. This is helping me attack my anxiety more quickly and experiencing peace sooner. Taking thoughts captive is a discipline, a muscle. It takes practice and persistence. Sometimes I am tired and weak and less effective, but I am seeing progress. I am thankful for our small group and many friends here at our campus who encourage me and pray for me. This community is a blessing to me and Joe. See y'all next week. That's D. That's good stuff for husband Joe. Yep. I just thought about something. It's already 1146. So how would y'all feel about we table this today and then have this conversation another day because once you once this can gets open it's it's going to get brought right i mean there's going to be a lot of ideas and thoughts and perspectives so are you are we cool if we do a, a 2.0 of this conversation another day and if you got ideas write them down shoot us emails we can we can also in between like you know have this conversation i don't know i cuz how much time do you guys have in your world <laughs> Wait, do you want to keep going or do you want to table it? Oh, we're going to roll. All right, let's do this. Okay. All right, let's hear from you guys. Yeah. <laughs> do work, son. <laughs> One really cool thing that we haven't really talked about today that I'm going to celebrate is the fact that God is bringing constantly new people to our Tocotney family. And um, I'm thinking about Aaron and his wife that came here from Seneca, South Carolina over the summer, and uh, that's where Bethany and I moved from before coming to Alaska, so how weird is that? Anyway, it's a small town in South Carolina, but God is bringing more people. We're seeing more people get plugged in. That's just really exciting, so that's worth also mentioning. All right. Back, but... Um, question is, uh, I guess, of this group, how many of the men and women here are actual current service members? Okay, one, two, that's actually, that's, that's great. Amazing. That's, that's awesome. awesome. I was just really curious because this is where, why the campus is here, or partially, uh, as well as the northeast part of Anchorage, but that's, that's actually really encouraging. I guess, you guys' thoughts about how you could see us reaching? I mean, I, I'm a non-service member, but <laughs> we have some uh, definite uh, similarities because we've been moving, I don't know, every two or three years for the last 12. So I feel like even in our experiences, even though there's vast differences, there's also that similarity that we know what it's like to move a lot, and that's hard. And um, but yet it's it still has its blessings, too. So how can we in our experience come alongside you guys and help you in reaching out to other service members? So I guess. That's a partial question, but I'm super excited that that so many hands were raised. Any of our service members want to step into that one? Okay, so I don't have the answers, um, obviously, but so for us, like we, we've only PCS once, so we were in Charleston for five years and we were able to like establish like a family and a community and all of that there. And then we came here and Alaska is so like separate and there's not, like it's not easy in a negative 11 to like get out and meet people and like go to the park and all of that. So like our community group has really like given us a home. And I think that's something that a lot of service members do like strive for is that community. Because when you are PCSing every two years, every four years, every six years, it's hard to really find that home. So when we came here, we, we um, went to a couple other churches, but when we came here, we really found that. And then when we got involved in community group, like that's where we really found like our home here. That's good stuff. Yeah, and we would love to start another J Bear small group. By the way, that is something that we'd love to do. We just need the right people to get it going and that kind of thing. I know many of our uh, servicemen and women here at Takatani are a part of a community group of some kind. Many of you meet with Lee, and um, sorry, um, 
just kidding, I love that guy. Um, but uh, no, but we would love to see another group get started on Jay Bear, et cetera. But that's, again, that's got to be something that God begins to author and, and make happen. So, yeah, thank you, Courtney, for sharing that. Thanks a lot for adding. But I, I think what really needs to be brainstormed on that is the outreach on Jay Bear. Like, how are we getting on J-Bear? Where are the needs at? I think you asked that. But, I mean, specifically, like, how do we do that? If we can't do that and we can't outreach, I, I mean, as great as community groups are, I mean, we can sit inside and be internal. I, I think there's benefits to that. But that outreach component, I, and I know that's difficult on J-Bear, especially for those of us who aren't service members, it's just even difficult to get on base. But I think start to throw those things out. I know we've done some things in the past pre-COVID, um, but I, I think that's that's got to be the heartbeat. I mean, is is outreach? It, it, that that that's not going to change. I mean, Jay Bear is one thing, and then also, I mean, the northeast side of you know, how, how do we start getting out in the community? It's real easy for me to live in South Anchorage and drive over here, you know, every Sunday, and then you know, see some and meet great people, be in community, and then drive right back to my, you know, my uh, you know, my my home on the south side. But that's just, it's not being, you know, in the community. I, I'm not providing any solutions in this, but I, I think starting to brainstorm that outreach of how do we actually do that. Okay, so um, one more thing that I can share today. I'm the principal at Ursa Major Elementary on J Bear. Wow. And, um, Chelsea and I started at the beginning of the year to reach out of how can Change Point to Cotnew and my position work together to um, begin some form of an outreach within the public school system, which is, um, uh, it's not an easy entity to blend the two, right? Um, so Chelsea came and we've put donuts and coffee out to bring to my staff. Um, and I am quick to share with my staff that I attend church here and what that looks like. And I keep thinking one day I'll walk in and I'll see a couple of them sitting here and that'll be exciting too. I don't know how we can expand to um, the school and reach the families. I'm uh, Ursa Major is the largest base school on base. And um, I would like to as overwhelmed as I am in my own new position, I'd like to um, offer out to be a vessel of some sort. I can help get people on base um, and other things that we can do to reach out through the school. But I didn't know if all of you knew that we do have that beginning of outreach and thought that might be a place to start brainstorming. Thank you. For people to know some of the things that are going on that we don't always hear, you know, like earlier on in the pandemic, we provided water bottles for, you know, the school for kids who didn't have, you know, water and weren't able to use the drinking fountains anymore due to COVID or, you know, other things. There are some really neat things going on in the community. You know, I think even when a couple months ago, the kids in Adventureland, they wrote welcome cards because a number of uh, Afghan refugees came and have been being resettled in Alaska. And so Catholic Social Services is organizing cards for the refugee families and just seeing our kids writing cards to welcome refugee families here and, you know, and writing them for the kids, little drawing pictures saying welcome to Alaska. Like, it is, there are amazing things already going on. And I'd love to see a step into that. But also, yeah, continue to see what could be new. How can we step into that? And then practically, how do we make that work? Because that can't just happen through the staff making it happen. It's got to be something that we do all together. And I think, you know, just getting to that financial piece, you know, also something where if we're going to do it, we need the resources to be able to do it. And a big part of that is praying and trusting the Lord to provide that. But just figuring out, okay, Lord, what is your part in this? Which obviously is everything. But in what part are you giving us a piece of what you're doing in that? I know I have had the opportunity to talk to many of you over the last couple months just about how people are doing, how you're doing, 
those kinds of things. And some of the things that we have heard from multiple people is to get back to that whole meeting together after a service. I mean, we did some cookouts over the summer, but one of the things that we used to throw down with at Takatanu was potlucks. I mean, come on, man. Some of the best food I've ever seen. We had a chili cook-off. Come on. It was real good. Anyway, you don't want to miss the next one of those. And just so you guys know, we were going to do one in October, another chili cook-off, but that was also right as the new COVID spike happened, and we felt like <laughs> that probably is not going to work, right? So um, those are another few of the ideas are coming back to those opportunities to meet together. Um, because people still want to connect. People still have those social and emotional needs that they need met. So, Anybody else this morning? Mr. Knight. Oh, Sheree. I'm um, new here, so I don't know um, if ChangePoint has... Uh, tie with any of the senior centers but the church that I attended in Kodiak um, the churches took turns going to the senior center and they would do like a, a brief Sunday service for the people there and the families there um, they would sing some songs and have a, a brief little message um, and I think it was a real highlight for the seniors that knew Christ to know that they would have a chance to worship. That's a good idea, Sheree. Mike. Oh, here we go. Sure, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're brainstorming, and let me preface this by saying that our partnership with Bartlett has been amazing. Yep. Uh, the facility here. I remember when Amplio came in and just kind of surveyed, you know, the auditorium and the flow through the cafeteria and everything. They were blown away with just the, I think they said it was one of the top five places they've seen as far. And they church, they, they planted hundreds of, of mobile churches and set up and tear down and all that kind of stuff. But they were blown away by the facility. Uh, but we've talked about this um, I really, it, just as a matter of prayer, as awesome as this place is and as good as a relationship that we have, um, we are limited and, you know, we're here on a Sunday. We're here for a couple hours. Um, like Nick was saying, you know, it's easy to drive in from South Anchorage and hang out here on a Sunday. But how awesome would it be if we could find a permanent spot here in Northeast Anchorage Come on. where we could be 24-7, uh, 365, and it really, you know, help the community uh, with a lot of practical needs during the week. So uh, we've looked, uh, we've kind of hit some dead ends, um, but if that, for just as a matter of prayer, uh, for something like that and really taking a lid off a, a ministry ceiling would be amazing. So, or if anybody's a realtor and has a sweet little property up in this part of town, let us know. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my wife and I are still pretty new to this congregation, and so when Justin says, let's brainstorm where we're going to go next with this, I'm drawing a complete blank. So I just wanted to say something logistically uh, practical as a, a suggestion. You know, we're starting to get some ideas going here. Some things are starting to percolate. But um, what about the idea of sending a, a Google Sheet out to everyone, a Google Doc? And so during the week, we can think about, we can pray about, we could add something on that. We can, you've got, I think, everyone's email, so we could do that. Because, you know, we're starting to get some ideas flowing, but I just think that would allow some of us that were totally unprepared to brainstorm new ideas a chance to think about and to see other people's uh, on writing. Yep. And this is the this is the first conversation of several. This will not be the one and only time. So, Addison. Thank you, Mike. Um, my name's Addison. Um, you've met my wife, Dressa, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm a veteran, uh, came up to Elmendorf in 1987, and so I've lived up here for many years. Um, I'm very familiar with the military community. Um, the campus over in Raspberry is actually much closer to my house. <laughs> 
so I, I make the choice to come to, to Cotnew, and the reason I make the choice is because uh, my wife and I both uh, share a heart for our military community, and we want to be active in that. Um, I know when I came up here, I had no clue what Alaska was about. I had no idea um, where the good fishing spots were, where the, you know, uh, what to do in the outdoors, how to prepare for the winter, and so forth. So um, I would just put out there from my personal perspective that I want to minister to the military community. I want to be active with our military service members and whatever we can do to um, encourage that, to network with that, to implement that. Um, I, I want to be a part of that. Uh, I do have base access. So um, anybody that's active duty that wants, you know, the benefit of, of my years of, of living up here in Alaska, I, you know, I'm willing to, to, to share that freely and uh, uh, as an outreach to the military in any way we can. Cool. Richard, you, you might be our last one. Yeah, I'm also a vet, and I just wanted to also say that our wives count as vets too because they went through the whole thing with us. And I'm wondering why don't we just organize a potluck here and now for a Sunday because the holiday season's coming and we should do it. Y'all want some y'all want some Christmas potluck action later in December? We can make that happen. Give the people what they want. That's what Randy's saying right now. I know it. All right. One more. Yes, ma'am. Um, so when we went to Texas, we a lot of the outreach there, we did like park days with the kids um, and would do worship and like a lot of them didn't even know what we were doing, but it was fun and it would be really cool, I think, especially with having access like to the base in several ways or like uh, the elementary playgrounds if we could like host a park day um, for the kids on base because I think that's a huge outreach and like I think even like seeing some parents' eyes of like when their ki kids are happy and like playing in a community and who that's brought by and then seeing that that is brought by like a church that not a lot of people know about I think is just an idea. It's a great one. So I got a plan, just happened. Brace yourselves. What if we did December 19th potluck in the cafeteria? Is that gonna work? Can we handle it? I know that's real close to Christmas. Or would you prefer like the 12th? Would that be better? This plan's going sideways real quick. All right, so we'll go December 12th and uh, we'll do it in the new cafeteria. We are just, this is a news flash for December. We are gonna be in the cafeteria on the 19th Christmas Eve and then also January 2nd. We'll do a whole thing in there. They have a cool screen. If you've never been in there, great place for us to eat on the 12th as well. And the other thing is this can, we can also kick this back up uh, December 12th. So you guys have a couple weeks if that works. I mean, that's a good natural place to be able to, you know, have conversation and eat some really good food. So, well, church family, thank you. I know we kept you a little longer today. Um, like I said, this is just the beginning of a conversation. It's good for us to get back to our roots in the sense of family meetings and those kinds of things. Um, we haven't always done them on a Sunday, so that's a little bit different. Um, but just thank you. Thank you for the things that you shared. Thank you for your openness. And I'm excited. I know our team is as well as we move forward. And, and you know, we're available. So if you guys ever need stuff, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. We do try to reach out to as many people as we can, but it does help when you guys reach out as well if there's something that comes up. So I'm going to invite you to stand if you don't mind. Let's, let's pray it up. And if you watched online, thank you for joining us online. And Chelsea, thank you for monitoring Facebook. Let's pray. King Jesus, I thank you for these men and women and our kids. There's life here, Father. Oh, there is life. And God, you know our needs right now, Father, individually. I pray, God, that you bring them. God, bless in ways that we never saw coming. I pray for healing physically for those that desperately need it. God, I pray for those that are struggling right now with anxiety or any kind of depression or just sadness, whatever it may be, Father. I pray that you bring just uplift them and lift off this burden that is upon them, Father. God, I pray if we need answers, 
in each of our lives, with our families, with career decisions, with our kids, how to parent, all the things. God, give us wisdom. And God, I thank you for these men and women. I thank you for this family because it is a family, Lord. And it's been really neat over the last three and a half years just to watch new people come into our family. And God, there's going to be even more that join our family. But God, we love you. You are the author and the perfecter of our faith. Show us how we can join you in what you're doing. In Jesus' name.